All right. So we're live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a special edition of Citrus Highlights, a new news series for the City of Citrus Heights. I'm Nicole Baxter, Communications Officer, and today I have the pleasure of interviewing community organizer and creek cleanup expert, Bill Templin. Well, thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you for inviting me. Of course. So I thought you could kick us off um, with a little information about your background. Um, we talked about it a, a little bit yesterday. I think it's super interesting, um, all the different jobs you've had. And then maybe you could talk to us how you got involved with the Sacramento Area Creeks Council. Sure. Um, <clears throat> Well, let's see, I retired from the federal government uh, in 2003, and that's when I started getting involved with the Creeks Council. And I volunteered as the site coordinator uh, for a few times at American River over by Cal Expo. And then uh, uh, being the type of person I am, I uh, got rigged into being on the board of the Secretary of the Creeks Council, and I've been on it ever since. Um, and it's been a pleasure, you know, it's just kind of fun to stay involved. And uh, of course, I never got too involved, uninvolved. Uh, after I retired, I did some consulting for a little bit as a hydrologist. Uh, that's what I was with the U.S. Geological Survey for 30 years. And, and then I got a grant up in Auburn uh, as a watershed coordinator. So I was working with the different stakeholders up in Auburn for four years uh, on the North Fork American River watershed. And, and then uh, when that grant ran out, then I uh, continued. I got started an environmental scientist career with the Regional Water Quality Control Board in, in 77 and, and then in 2000 or 2007, excuse me. And in uh, 2009, I transferred over to Department of Water Resources and worked from worked in the West Sac office there from uh, 2009 to 2017 when I retired again with 10 years in the state. So I've uh, stayed pretty much unretired, done a little consulting since then, and, and I work part time now at Sportsman's Warehouse in their fishing department. So that's kind of a fun job. That's great. So what drew you to the Sacramento Area Creeks Council? Can you talk to our audience a little bit about their mission and why their work is so important? Well, uh, the whole idea is to increase the awareness of people uh, in their, their creeks and the fact, you know, you drive over and buy them every day. Uh, some people don't even notice they're there. And so we've gone through a signage process. Uh, the county has pretty, pretty nice signs up on many of the bridges now. And uh, there's any individuals that are signing the bridges too. And so the whole idea is to let people know the importance of those creeks. And homeowners tend to, to understand that because they do have a value on, uh, uh, an effect on increasing the value of your home. Uh, people who live close to creeks for the most part enjoy walking along creeks and enjoy the, the birds and habitat and all the affinities that go along with that. Um, so that's kind of what got me there. I've always been outdoors related. Uh, started out fishing and hunting at a young age and was raised down the San Joaquin Valley down south of Fresno and uh, moved up to Sacramento uh, in 77 after I started a career of USGS and field work measuring stream flows out of Merced and then uh, moved up here and started doing hydrologic studies all over the state. Uh, and uh, that was a, a real good career. I wound up having a, a moving up, unfortunately, behind a desk a lot. Uh, but uh, I was in charge of water use information statewide, and, and I was able to travel all over the United States giving talks and, and uh, uh, teaching at the National Training Center and various things. So that was a real good career. Uh, enjoyed it. Great. Well, I know these days you are not stuck behind a desk very often. Um, you shared with me some photos of a recent cleanup. I think a couple different cleanups that you guys did. So I'm going to go ahead and screen share those for our audience now. Um, okay. So talk to us about, you know, what keeps you busy on weekends these days. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, for the last 12 weeks, I, uh, let me back up. The uh, uh, Alta Tura is the president of the uh, Secondary Creeks Council. I've been the president and the secretary and various things there. <clears throat> and she had, uh, since we weren't able to do Creek Week last year, um, we started doing these random acts of cleanup. And uh, I did a couple on Arcade Creek and I'd always done Arcade Creek here at Arcade Creek Park near American River College uh, annually as part of the Creek Week. That was my site that I coordinated for years. And then uh, this year, Alta came up with this idea that since uh, Elk Grove community had organized these weekly cleanups that you know we shouldn't be outdone here in the North part of this county and, and that we should start doing that. And I said, well, heck, you know, I've been doing Arcade Creek long enough. I'm pretty familiar with it. So let's just start doing it. So we did it. And here, 12 weeks later, of, of I have a little utility trailer that's a three-quarter ton 
pickup bed, as you see in the picture there. And, and uh, every week we seem to find a way to fill it. And sometimes the weeks are, are heavier than others. But this week, uh, up in the upper left-hand corner, there was only two of us uh, of the, and that's the only time that's happened over the 12 weeks. Uh, uh, but uh, this young lady uh, and I filled this trailer uh, with 480 pounds of trash. Wow. And, and that's the least amount of trash we've had in the 12, 12 weeks uh, uh, and the least amount of people. Uh, our previous high before last week was nine people and 1,100 pounds in two hours. Uh, this this last Saturday, we broke that all to shreds and uh, we had 16 people, four of whom came all the way down from Forest Hill, uh, a high school teacher and her students that I've known for a long time since I was watershed coordinator up there. And um, these people came to work. Uh, we, uh, in two hours, we put 2,240 pounds of trash in that trailer and for, not too bad for a three quarter ton to carry more than a ton, uh, but it was, it was creaking and let me know that it was, it was full. <laughs> well, that's excellent. Well, if you're just joining us, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I'm Nicole Baxter, communications officer for the city of Citrus Heights. And today we're talking with community cleanup expert, Bill Templin about random acts of cleanup and the importance of cleaning up our creek. Um, Citrus Heights has tons of creeks throughout the city, beautiful. Um, and we know that there's a need for this. Creek Week, normally we have about 80 sites regionally that we organize cleanups at. Um, so this year looks a little different. We're encouraging the community to do random acts of cleanup. Um, Bill, these aren't random, these are organized and you were just sharing um, the huge success that you've had. Um, it sounds like, you know, the amount of volunteers ebbs and flows from weekend to weekend. Um, and I'm curious if anyone's tuning in now and they're interested in joining a cleanup or starting their own, since you are such an expert, what are some tips that you have to share? Well, uh, if they're interested in doing that, they may have already had some experience in, in one of the Creek Week uh, activities. Uh, but if they haven't, uh, I would recommend they join uh, in on one of the cleanups that we do. Um, I, I, I'm going to continue uh, again in two weeks uh, with these weekly cleanups of Arcade Creek. Um, this week I'm heading down to San, uh, the San Joaquin Valley and going up to Kings Canyon where I lead monthly cleanups up in there uh, once the road is open and it just opened this last week. So this Saturday we'll have the first of seven cleanups down there. So there are people are welcome to, uh, to come and help with that too if you'd like to get out of the city and, and see what uh, the uh, alternative to Yosemite Valley might be. Uh, we call it the Yosemite Valley without the people. Um, it can get busy there on the weekends or holiday weekends, but usually we go that weekend after, and so we clean up after the holiday mess. Uh, and it's, it's nothing compared to what we see here locally. Uh, you know, if we get 150 pounds in three hours, we're doing well um, uh, in, in Kings Canyon. Not, not compared, nothing compared to the 500 or, or 2,000 pounds that we've gotten here in Gate Creek. Now that one picture you showed on the, in the last slide, uh, on the two pictures on the right, these are uh, that at Greenback is that's is in Citrus Heights, and uh, that's at the uh, uh, Sacramento County's alert flood control alert station. You can see that brown pipe standing there. That lets people know when the waters are high, and uh, so that's the upstream side of the bridge, and that's where um, Cindy Pridmore and I picked up the 480 pounds uh, by ourselves that one day. That's in that one stack to the left. And then the, the picture to the lower right is the following weekend. We had nine uh, volunteers that day and we picked up another 500 pounds on the downstream side of that same bridge. Um, wow. So I just that out. I had made this little before and after because you sent me these photos and I thought that they were so compelling the before and then the after. Yeah, it makes a big difference. And and the reason we, I'm so interested in this is I'm into fish and uh, and in clean environments. I When I walk my dogs in the neighborhood, I always carry my litter getter in a little trash bag to pick up after them and, and everybody else's dogs and all the other trash that is dumped when people get their uh, trash picked up and then flies out the, the top of the, uh, the garbage trucks. Um, but the fish is what really brought me to Arcade Creek. Uh, in 2015, we started identifying uh, the Chinook salmon come up that creek. And so we started thinking, well, okay, that's great. So I had, I put together a poster for a, a, 
San Juan Restoration Conference in, in UC, at UC Davis and uh, in 2017 documented that and we started laying out ways we could what we could do to, to improve the, the, the habitat and and one of the things that we've noticed is a lot of the uh, the material finds its way to the bottom of the creek where the, the salmon are trying to spawn and it's kind of hard to spawn when you've got grocery carts and tents and sleeping bags and stuff covering the bottom of the channel so we're trying to uh, uh, remove those things so the fish have a better chance of, of uh, uh, finding adequate uh, spawning gravels and that's another thing if, if there isn't adequate spawning gravels or they're covered with sand we're trying to uh, enhance the, the fishery figure out where we could uh, put in some new spawning gravels and how we can control the erosion upstream so that uh, we don't have sediment coming in uh, that would be covering up the existing spawning gravels. The other thing that we, we see is, is that there's a concentration, since Arcade Creek is 95% developed in hardscape, uh, there's a lot of runoff. First, the storm runoff is, is a, a big contributor to concentrating the flows in the discharges that come into the creeks. And when that happens, uh, it, it causes erosion in the creek because it's, and it's causing scour of the bottom of the creek, which then all that erosion creates a lot of sand being transported and we'll find three foot de deep uh, waves of sand passing down the creek as it goes, as the water uh, comes down during a, a wet year. So you just covered several reasons why these cleanups are so important. I mean, you can see from the photos, especially the before and after, just for the community aspect of enjoying our beautiful creeks here in Citrus Heights. But beyond that, um, the impacts, the long lasting impacts they can have on our environment. Um, I think that really speaks to how important these random acts of cleanup are. Um, so I did want to screen share the Creek Week um, website. And um, I was thinking we could direct those interested here. This is just creekweek.net. Um, and if you click on the random acts of cleanup section, you'll actually scroll down and you'll see our very own Bill Templin's information here. Bill, you have a Facebook page for Arcade Creek. Um, and I know that you share out information. You've got your email address, your phone number here. Um, so if someone's going to join your, your cleanup, not this weekend, but next weekend at Arcade Creek, um, are there tools that they should bring? Is there information that they should come armed with so that they feel prepared? Sure. Um, well, you don't want to wear flip-flops and shorts. Uh, that's <laughs> one thing. Uh, you, we have, uh, safety is our number one issue when we get out on these creeks and, and it would be very easy to get hurt. Uh, now that it's not as wet out, things are drying out. And, and so that removes some of the, the hazards of slipping and falling, but there's still, uh, the grass is getting real high and, and uh, uh, God's green earth has taken over now. And so it's really growing, but it's gonna start dying here pretty soon. And that's gonna cause all kinds of other issues that we deal with. But, you know, there's hazards of, of um, poison oak, ticks, mosquitoes, various things in addition to slipping and falling. And, and uh, you know, whenever you're around creeks near bridges, you're gonna be around traffic. So traffic is our biggest concern because that, that could do some big damage. So we have to be very careful uh, on all our cleanups around traffic. So uh, those are the things, so you wanna dress appropriate. If you can dress in lighter colored uh, clothing, if, if ticks do get on you, you can find them easier that way. And you wanna also you know, check yourself afterwards. We only had one report of ticks on Arcade Creek and I've, I've never got them. Now, poison oak's a different story. Poison oak and long sleeves and long pants help um, prevent you from getting poison oak. And we provide gloves, we provide litter getters, we provide bags. And uh, normally when you're out along the creek, the masks aren't necessary because we're not, we're, we're socially distanced typically. So that's not a problem. We do have masks because anybody needs them. Um, the bags we provide, and then we'll, you know, bring the, the trash up to the some location centralized area where we can load it in that little trailer you saw and, and uh, I'll take them off to the uh, to the transfer site. That's the other thing that you need to kind of work out. Once you have cluttered that trash, what are you gonna do with it? Mm -hmm. And you've had uh, people, I know Citrus Heights has a program I've heard that will pick up the, the uh, collections uh, after you're finished. The only problem with that, it needs to be picked up that day. Uh, because otherwise it seems to find its way back to the creek. Some of this stuff is, is uh, popularly used by the campers along there. And uh, they may need some of those blankets or something that uh, somebody else had, uh, even if it's dirty and filthy and contaminated. Uh, 
which is kind of sad, you know, but there are a lot of people that are providing new materials for them. A lot of the churches are providing food and clothing and various things that help people exist out there. Um, so we're trying to get rid of the stuff that they shouldn't be using anyway. Absolutely. Yeah. So you did speak to an important part of this. If a group is organizing a big cleanup, um, if you're going to join Bill's cleanup, he's already got all the tools you need. Uh, sounds like they just need manpower. You got to come dressed appropriately and ready to volunteer. If you're going to organize your own cleanup in such a site, we encourage you to reach out to our general services division um, and set up, see if you can arrange a, a pickup. So if you're going to be picking up large amounts of trash, we definitely want to um, help you out there and carry that away for you. So we'll be sure to drop that information in the comments section. Um, we'll also link to the Creek Week website, which I know has a great list of tips, um, safety tips, um, cleanup tips, and really a random act of cleanup uh, can range. We're encouraging and want to spotlight everyone who's helping. So if that's just like you said, Bill, walking your dog with your trash picker upper and picking up trash where you see it in your neighborhood, um, that's one end of the spectrum all the way up to joining a big cleanup effort. Um, like what you do along Arcade Creek. Uh, we want to celebrate any and all acts of random cleanup. Um, and we know that even cleaning up in your neighborhood can help our creeks. You know, when it rains, um, you know, it doesn't seem like it's raining that much these days, but when it does, we know that, that that trash and litter makes its way to our creeks and it has huge impacts on the community. Um, so we shared your tips. We talked about your past cleanups. Um, you did talk a little bit about what you're doing this weekend. Um, but let's focus in on two weeks from now or two weeks from this Saturday when you're going to be back at Arcade Creek. Where's your meetup spot um, and how should people contact you if they want to join up? Well, we, we've uh, maintained a one meetup spot. It's at uh, Arcade Creek Park on Omni Drive uh, just off of Garfield. You have to get there by uh, Madison um, and Madison to Hackberry to Omni. And it, Omni did its ends end of the park. It's a nice little park. It's got uh, toys for the kids to play on and the uh, basketball place and, and uh, mm -hmm. tennis courts. I don't know if they have the nets up. They took the nets down during the COVID. Uh, and there's nice, nice little walking trails that are signed with interpretive panels talking about the trees and birds and habitat. So it's a nice place if people come early or they'd like to come back and, and enjoy and learn more about the watershed. That's a nice place to go. And then what we'll do is we each week we'll go around and find the hot spot for that week that seems to be the worst case scenario that we should focus on and and we'll then move the group over to that site. Sometimes it's a mile or two away. So driving is good. We can carpool if necessary. Um, and that's also nice. That park is, is uh, in a residential area. So we haven't had any trouble with people uh, having any problem with their leaving their cars behind. And a lot of people are concerned about that. But you, know, you can bring your car with you. We try to find spots where there's places to park uh, for everyone who, who wants to bring their cars. So that's it. The other thing I mentioned, I didn't mention that we provide is the red vest. In the pictures, you saw the, the orange vest, um, and that's really important. Uh, and we take before and after pictures. So if uh, something um, should come up uh, and somebody, we don't know where they are, or at least we know what they were dressed in and that. And we haven't had any of that problem either yet. But uh, the other issue that I didn't mention was safety uh, of, around the, the campers. Uh, we try to avoid those the, the campsite talk to them if, if they're uh, talking talkable um, uh, but uh, don't go don't enter an occupied site and just pick up around it uh, typically I'll take the lead on on those those site areas and let everybody else do the the hard work uh, down in the creek and around and, and some of that stuff gets really heavy it gets, it gets to be work <laughs> you know if you're really serious about that but that's what adds that uh, uh, weight to that trailer and it it helps clean up the bottom of the creek for the fish. Absolutely. All right. So I just tuned into our comment section. I wanted to say hi to Alta. She says, hi, Bill. Thank you so much for joining us, David. Rena, we just covered um, where Bill's cleanup will be, not this weekend, but next weekend. And we'll drop that into the comment section so you guys can check it out. Um, again, a great resource for all things random acts of cleanup or creek cleanup. That's creekweek.net, um, and that's the Sacramento Area Creeks Council's website. Um, and if you click a button at the top uh, for random acts of cleanup, it'll jump you down to uh, Bill's contact information with a link to his Facebook page. Um, so we covered a lot today. 
Bill, thank you so much for your time. Thanks to everyone who tuned in and joined us live. If you're watching a recording of this and you have questions, please feel free to comment those um, and we will comment back and address your uh, questions as they come in. Um, so Bill, it sounds like you've got a busy weekend and a couple next few weekends ahead of you. So thank you so much for your time today and everything that you're doing for the community. You're welcome, Nicole. All right, have a great day. You too. Bye-bye.